Welcome to the Stash Club Wrestling Podcast. My name is John. My name is Dante. Everyone can stop yelling at us. We got some mic Woo! stands. Look, look, at this. look at this. Look at this. Hands don't free. have to hold anything anymore. We can do so much with our hands. Hands-free podcast today and for the foreseeable future. This episode is brought to you by Babbel. Babbel. We're going to hear more for them uh, later in the show. Thank you for sponsoring this episode. Shout out to Babbel. Welcome, everyone. This is episode 86. <laughs> Big number. I figured notable to mention every now and again. We're getting yeah, up there. Yeah, I felt naked on hey, my headphones. Each, ep- each episode is closer and closer to 100. Each episode is closer to the 89th episode. That's true. That's true. Big episode this week. we got a lot to talk about. We are actually going to start out with a huge dynamite, but... Huge dynamite. I want to I wanna ask you how the concert was last night. Oh, yeah. So I'm sure well, we'll talk more about it. Holy, <laughs> shouldn't have done that while I was talking. That... Ooh, sorry, loud, plugging in my headphones. A little loud there. Yeah, a little bit. Um, um, yeah, so we're going to be talking about But before Dynamite. then... Before then, we're going to be talking <laughs> about Dynamite, uh, the show that I unfortunately did not get to watch last night because I went to Zach Bryan at Gillette Stadium. I'm going to tell you something. I don't know if you're a big Zach Bryan or like really listen to... Well, let me interrupt you. Let me interrupt music. you because I want to get a plug off first while we're at the top Go of the ahead, episode. Please, if you want to hear maybe a little bit... We're going to hear about Dante's time, but if you want to hear a little <laughs> bit more and also we're answering a bunch of questions over on Patreon for five nine nine a month, patreon.com slash dash club wrestling, um, you get this free main episode and then you get it ad free and then you get a bonus episode that we're going to record right after this. That sounds like an incredible deal. Four, about, about four bonus episodes a month so uh head over there it's a good time nice community over there we're getting Great community and then you get access to the discord and it's awesome yeah no it's um, awesome good chats good questions good community with that said dante i apologize for interrupting no you, no no but, please uh no i i know that what's the last album he put out he just put or out no i guess the, the one great before american bar scene zach bryan just like self-titled and that's the one it's like the black album cover yes. like smoking a cigarette yep. i know i've listened to a little bit of that mm-hmm. and i know that's like it's it's considered one of the best albums come out in the past like decade. Um, I recognize he's he's very very talented, and I do like some of that album. I'm, I just haven't done a deep dive. That's fine. I haven't done yeah, a deep dive. The thing is, is like, but I get it. I get it. I didn't really start listening to him until probably early last year, maybe a little bit before. He has one really popular song. Probably I would say his most popular song, at least before his last albums came out something in the orange okay that's like hmm. I, I, maybe if you What's listen to it maybe you'd catch it it's like um something in the orange talking about like it's a love song kind huh. of in a way um so i feel like there are some concerts i've been to a good amount of concerts plethora. in my time plethora good word um and there are some concerts i walk away from like that was good like you know it's like you're just gonna go to have a good time you're like you're not really like not that you're not super into the artist, but like you have your favorites. And he's mm-hmm. like, not your favorite, but like it's still good. Zach Bryan, I listen to a lot. Oh, okay. He's probably like genuinely, like I probably listen to like him, J. Cole the mm-hmm. most. Like I have all artists right now. Um, I know they had a song together. That I wish one day. I had the best time Hell at yeah. his concert last night. Like it's one thing I look, for, two things I look for in concerts is one, just like, the actual genuine like music and like the band aspect where he had yeah. like people playing the drums, all the guitars, violin, saxophone, harmonica. Like he had everyone playing everything. I love that. I love the actual like vibe of like a full band playing. Mm-hmm. And two, how they sound on stage compared to in studio. You couldn't even tell the difference of a studio recorded Zach wow. Bryan and live Zach And Bryan. that was at Gillette, right? Have you ever been 60, to? 60,000 people. Wow. I've never been to a concert there before. I've never been to a concert like a football stadium. I've been to concerts at like arenas, which right. I don't even love. But uh, the football stadium seems sick. I'm trying to think. I don't think I've been to a concert at a football stadium before. Okay. But yeah, dude, 60, 65,000 at seats. We were up top. I mean, I paid a, like the tickets were a good amount of money and we were like up top. So yeah, like yeah. I can only imagine what how much it was like down below like on the floor or whatever, but that place was packed. Oh yeah, I he mean, sell like, it out. V- it, if he didn't, Just he was about, very yeah. close, very close. Um, yeah, man, huge. Uh, I'm love Zach Bryan. We, I got the tickets back in November. Wow. So, so this is like we've had oh, me, and, me and my girlfriend have been waiting to go yeah. for a long time. Wow. Um, and it, we sat there, and I like said to her, I was like. I can't believe we're finally. Like, <laughs> yeah, I can't yeah. believe like this day has come. Uh, but yeah, no, super fun. I don't know like where I'd rank it. Like, you know, hey, no one's asking. Uh, no one's asked for no a rank. Asking I'll save that for it. Patreon. <laughs> uh, but no, it genuinely was like one of my favorite concerts cool. that I went to. Hell yeah! Like, and they brought out if anyone's a fan of the Lumineers, they mm. brought out the Lumineers, which is awesome. I, I like their music uh, a bit. 
Um, I know my girlfriend does. She started crying when they when they came out. So that was a uh, pretty hmm. pretty cool for her. Um, but yeah, yeah, great time. Hell Missed yeah. Dynamite, which I am upset about because we're gonna talk about mm-hmm. uh, you know oh. more predominantly you were gonna talk about um, an amazing match that happened that I will catch up on that I will watch. <laughs> I, I promise you. Um, but yeah, we can get into that. So that does lead us right into Dynamite. We're gonna start off with dynamite at the top of the show because i think it was the best show this week uh raw and smackdown or just raw and smackdown it's pretty yep. run-of-the-mill smackdown yep. raw and smackdowns but i'm figuring out how to how to sit with this mic stand I know, now this you know what i mean us. i'm like yeah this I is where, where i put my laptop okay can you put the mic maybe put it a little closer to your mouth a little closer to my mouth yeah, i can do that. bend it up a little bit there you go um okay so what what is seemingly to be a hotter take than i uh, thought after watching that match, just being on Twitter, um, MJF defeats Will Ospreay to win the inter uh, international championship Crazy. in a le- uh, what what fell two seconds short of a sixty minute bang. That's crazy. This was so fucking good. I had a great time. There's a lot of criticisms mm-hmm. here. I saw some of the criticisms were like. Some people said, A, it lasted too long. Some people said, uh, criticized some of the selling because there was a lot where um, there was one where Will Ospreay was leaning on his uh, knee a lot. There was one where he hurt his shoulder. There was a lot of different like injuries. And uh, he, I mean, 60 you know, minutes, a lot could happen. Kind of toward the end, you know, you kind of like forget about the, the, the injury maybe. I don't know. I didn't see a fault in that, especially the shoulder. I, they kind of played it up and he dislocated it. Pop that sucker back in. You're Will Ospreay. Right You're back. ready to go. You're right back in it. Yep. Um, just like the, the the look of these two guys by the end of this 60 minutes, they're drenched in fucking mm. sweat. Their 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 hair is soaking wet, and they did the thing which I love at the end of the match. Uh, MJF gets the pin. I'll tell you about how the, how the match ended and everything. Yep. But MJF gets the pin, and one two three, and they both lay there and don't move. And they bring oxygen to the saw the ring. I saw that MGF yeah. putting them oxygen masks Fuck on his yeah. face. And then he hilarious. goes, he goes, you probably saw the same clip. He's exiting the ring with an oxygen mask. And he goes, easy dub, easy <laughs> dub. <laughs> After 60 minutes, easy dub, easy dub. I'll, it didn't take long for AEW to put a belt back on MJF. No, no, no kidding. Back. I, uh, I am shocked he won. I'm shocked. People, as this was going on, people were like, oh, it's going to go to 60 minutes and we'll just get right. a rematch. Right. I'm shocked that didn't happen. I'm shocked MJF beat him. Um, yeah, Will Ospreay. I mean, I think we both were kind of expecting him to have a a longer run with the Especially after sure. losing the AEW title mm-hmm. match. Right. Um, this was, again, maybe a hot take to some. I don't know how it's a hot take. Match of the year contender. Match of the year contender easy i mean when you go that long i, I don't see God. how how it might not be up there and i don't get the complaining either about like it's two of the most entertaining and best wrestlers in the world today going 60 minutes so what was the biggest complaint the i think how it was just long it was yeah there was like some stints in the middle where like they were kind of just like they were just like doing moves to kill time without sure. much like meaning behind it which is like again it's 60 minutes you gotta you know, I they did everything you could do in wrestling. I mean, you have the the two biggest stars in AEW going at it, and it's the 250th show. Again, I haven't seen the match, mm-hmm. so like, I have to go back to actually critique it for myself. But like, sure. I feel like it's their arguably their biggest weekly sh- episode ever. Yeah, your opening. I think it opened right. Yeah, they it opened, opened the show with two one of the God. the best wrestler in the world, and Will Ospreay, and one of the best wrestlers characters in MJF. I don't see why people would be upset that they did a 60 minute match. I feel like that's kind of like that's sick. I saw another critique that I don't I don't agree with that was like, oh, they let which is like it's it's a wrestling show, but they were like, oh, they let these two guys go for an hour. They, there's no time for anyone else. Oh, and no. What the and it's, no. it's fine. Yeah. Once the, um, it's a free show. You got a 60 minute match. There's on not a, it's, you have to it's pay a free show. There's not 60 minute matches every week. It, People are yeah, allowed people like that happens like every other week. Wrestlers are allowed to have these career highlights on a TV show. And, you know, I, I think it's fine that fucking, uh, I don't know, I was, uh, Matt Seidel doesn't get a Matt. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Like, I, I think it's you. fine. I love Matt Seidel. But <laughs> again, uh, and again, I want to go back. It's their 250th episode. Yeah. You you have it's okay to have a match like that it's okay to have 
one of your best on like TV matches so of the year to give away like that. Mm-hmm. That's okay. I feel again. I'll watch it back. I'm excited to watch it. I am shocked by the decision. Me too. Because dude. I really thought Will was gonna have a really solid run with the international belt. Mm-hmm. And if like you're gonna lose it, I would have thought he would have lost it on a bigger stage. At first, I thought it was a screw up. I thought because oh, really? like they, they yeah. So how did it like, end? How did okay, it end? so I'll give you the kind of the beats uh, mm-hmm. in general. So there was a Styles clash done by Will Ospreay on the apron. Ooh. There was a Styles clash done, and they were calling it a Styles clash cool. done on the turnbuckle. MJF hit a huge elbow drop from the top to an outside Saw table. Saw that. Uh, MJF set up for the crossroads. Mm-hmm. Will reversed it, did a crossroads of his own. Looked on the camera, wink, Stop. crossroads. Oh, which I guess that's kind of I guess recently. In a recent interview, Cody revealed that he got the Cody cutter from Will. Oh, so that was okay. kind of like, a, like a, I see you. Right back at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um, they went into the, like like I said, they did everything. They even went into the crowd. There was this one, one of my favorite moments in the match where Will's beating up MJF. Like, just kind of like, you know, giving him like, yep. almost like kind of how like. Shame. Uh, yeah, 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 but yeah. it was more like in the gut. And there's this little girl that steps up from the crowd and starts <laughs> i saw that love that <laughs> he's away. Like, isn't he like flipping her off like he, as he's getting hit he kind of like i think will kind of choose i don't think she was in like it was a funny moment but like a liability reasons it was probably like a okay okay that's enough it definitely you know I mean? wasn't like a planned thing he was like doing right. it and being like come here really quick and do something and yeah. then <laughs> she's it was like almost out of a cartoon where she's like hitting him and mid Mid getting beat up, she stops hitting him and like turns away, like walk back and whatever. And MJF flips her <laughs> off, flips um, her off, and then Will starts beat. It was just like the the it was the it was the timing was perfect. He was just <laughs> I'm thrilled that he is back as a heel now. It's so good, and even like, if he's like getting sh- sheared and it's a pseudo heel thing. Listen, the work is the is the, the same. The work heel is work. the same. Listen, MJF had his he had his run as a face. He had his moment with Adam Cole doing all that stuff. But heel MJF is the GOAT. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. is the best heel in wrestling. Uh, that's his bread and butter right there. I'm so happy they, they're they allowing him to be a heel again. The So how it ended, ref gets knocked out. Classic. Classic. Uh, MJF pulls out of his out of his tights. Diamond ring. Classic. Clocks, clocks well with the diamond ring to end the 60 That's minutes. how it ended? Clocks him with the diamond. That's the... I think that's the biggest criticism that i can i can understand i wasn't expecting you to say that was i was expecting you to say hit that then hit another move. no clocked him with a diamond ring knocked him out one two three with two seconds left on the timer i thought again i thought it was a fuck up because i thought they were going to do a classic like one two and then oh, uh, a classic up. uh cm mm-hmm. punk's music or drew mcintyre music hits during right Damian pre seth rollins type thing <laughs> it felt mm-hmm. like it was because like the, the the crowd was so shocked it felt like a mistake. i feel like <sighs> I love the shocking win. Yes. And again, it's MJF. It's, it's classic not like, MJF. It's not like it's a random like shocking win as in like, I can't believe this guy beat Will Ospreay. It's like, okay, MJF beat Will Ospreay. I can I understand that. I feel like if you're going to do a finish like that, maybe it's like you hit it and then the timer runs out. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you almost cheated to beat me, but you, could, like, you couldn't do it. Cause, whatever. Um, yeah. I, yeah that's, that's my that's, one. I don't hate it because at the end of the day, it is like, a classic MJF shit heel right, win. Right, right. There, I, I, that's the only criticism that I'm kind of, I slightly see is like I would, would I have preferred a different ending? I think a different ending would have been would have been better. Sure. But I don't think the ending harpened this to the end. This right. No, you know? I mean, listen, I love a good shocking win. It's their 250th show. You want to do something crazy. You want to make it memorable. I think that's exactly what they did. The only thing I think I would say i'm um, surprised or upset about is the how short his reign was mm-hmm. with the belt that's it but i mean will hit this crazy mjf is and i always this is the thing i we always talk about how good mjf is which is like talking in the ring and just like just like adding more to his character just like little comments and shit yeah he i forget what it was but he was like uh he was out he was outside the ring ropes right behind him and he's like smartest wrestler in the biz and then will comes flying with a hidden blade oh the i saw they that were in the ring cra- right they're out, uh, outside oh, the they're ring. outside the ring okay okay crazy that's funny um no i thought i think they did 
Like, they did everything you could want in a wrestling match. Mm -hmm. They did the table spot. They fought in the crowd. They did other finishers. They did, you know, I thought this shit was really crazy. I wonder if this match was on a pay-per-view. People would react differently or think differently of it. Maybe. Compared to just being on a regular show. Then you don't get get the, um, you don't get ad. I think it was maybe two or three commercial breaks. So you don't get that on a a pay-per-view. Two-hour show. You're going to get a few commercial breaks. So I don't know, but I... Um, that's just some of the criticisms, but ultimately it's, uh, up there with, um, Swerve and Will and Danielson and, um, uh, I just saw it, I just saw it, um, Dan, I guess Danielson and Osprey, yeah. and then obviously Roman Cody, uh, two. Sure, sure. Like those are circling my match of the year, you know what I mean? Halfway through the yeah. year. Um, yeah, I'm excited to watch it. Uh, yeah, it's def- good. I'm definitely making it a point to watch at some point today. We'd like to take a quick break in the episode to tell you about our sponsor today, Babbel. Did you know that learning actually makes a sound? It's true. Listen to this. That's the sound of you learning a new language with Babbel. About a few months ago, Dante and I got to train professionally for a couple wrestling matches, one wrestling match that is, and the learning curve was shortened a lot with the wisdom of all the trainers and professionals we worked with. The same goes with learning other skills as well, and Babbel is the pro to go to when it comes to learning a new language. Babbel's quick 10 minute lessons are handcrafted by over 200 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in only as little as three weeks. Not a lot of time. Well, not That's a lot quick. Of time at all. That's quick. That's very quick. Their tips and tools are approachable, accessible, rooted in real life situations, and delivered with conversation based teachings so you're ready to practice what you've learned in the real world. People enjoy pro wrestling all around the world. That means many people speak many different languages that enjoy pro wrestling around the world. Yep. We have a Discord that include people from around the world. Mm-hmm. So learning a new language really gets you, makes it easier to kind of communicate with all these wrestling fans around the world one on one. You can all kind of relate to the same language, which is pro wrestling. But you can do that by learning learning a new language easier. If this sounds good to you, download Babbel. Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners. Right now, get up to 60% off at babbel.com slash stash, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L.com slash stash, S-T-A-C-H-E. Rules and restrictions may apply. Thank you, Babbel, for sponsoring today's episode. Now back to the show. Kind of to round out AEW before we jump over to SmackDown and Raw, Mariah May. Mm. Also one of the best stories in wrestling. Yep, absolutely. Uh, she comes out dressed Dresses. as timeless Tony Storm. Saw that. And kind of like, uh, you know, just a, a, a you know, solid promo and just kind of like, oh, I can be whoever I want. Talking about the heel turn yep. or whatever and um, hyping up their match. This is amazing. Mariah May is on top she's, of the world. She is uh, a star in the main. Well, she's already a star. Um, but yeah. this is like the, this is the breakout story. Big time. For her. It's it, really, really I good. I genuinely, I know we're a little over a month away, but I genuinely would be shocked if she didn't beat Tony Storm at all in. She needs at this to. Point, she dude, needs to. I think it's like, you have, she has so much momentum now. And Tony Storm is one of those superstars, one of those wrestlers where she, her character is so good and she's just so good in general, where it's like, it, she doesn't need a belt. Or she can lose to someone mm-hmm, like Mariah mm-hmm, May and right. like kind of, you know, the next, not, I want to say the next generation, but like kind of passing the torch in a way. And it's like, you are, you're the top face right now. You're the top female. I mean, like, because I can, like the story is so good and it's been leading up so to good. it. Like, I don't think it's at all like a, uh, Tony lost to like the newbie or whatever. It's like this, this woman is obsessed with you and, and it's or, very and justified. It's very justified. She turned on you and, and just in got a brutal, the better in brutal fashion. That shit, yeah. Heard two weeks ago with the, the licking the blood and shit. Yeah, you uh, shit's crazy. Fuck. You sick fuck. Um, and then we got the blood and guts, which I didn't realize this is gonna be next week. Blood and guts match for next I week saw, is set. I saw who was. Uh, we got announced. on one side. We got the elite of the Bucks, Okada, Jack Perry, Hangman Love that. versus Team AEW, being the acclaimed Mark Briscoe, Swerve Strickland, and then coming down from the rafters, a la Sting, uh, 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 Darby Allen is joining team aw that's gonna be a fun match yeah it's gonna be i always forget quick, huh i always forget that it's like a tv show like yeah blood and guts you yeah. know what i mean like that's gonna be nuts i'm excited I, for that my, i feel like right now uh seeing that who's in the match the acclaimed i feel like they're just kind of i know they're a part of a story right now and all that stuff but i feel like they're the two like more underwhelming guys i'm hope i'm hoping they have a little good bit showing I think Mark Briscoe is going to be the MVP of this match. Oh, I feel yeah. like he's going to go fucking crazy. I mean, we've I never. I think this is a great match for him. Him, it's like 
the a blood and guts match is made for a Mark Briscoe. Big you know time. what I mean? Yeah. Um, and Darby, honestly, uh, like him, Darby, him and Darby yeah. are gonna the Darby go crazy. Being said. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I'm excited. So That'll be a great match. It was a good show. It was a really good show. And also, uh, swerve is they did swerve in Okada at the end, and then but like it was mainly just to to, to get broken up by, yeah. um, by this. But, but something else, something a little piece of news, fun piece of news. You can now, well, I don't know if it's released or not yet, but you can play eventually, maybe now, as Cody Rhodes, Rhea Ripley, and Rey Mysterio in Call of Duty Season 5. Man, I wish, Holy they, I shit. wish they put this on any other game than Call of Duty. Why is it bad? It's not bad. It's just, I don't know. Call of Duty has become one of those games where they kind of like rinse and repeat at this point, and mm-hmm. it's like just like kind of like obviously it's like different title game so it's like different kind of like theme or whatever but it's really the same i'm excited for black ops 6 i think black ops 6 looks great they're adding whole new movement mechanics and stuff and, mm-hmm. and it's like a uh so not similar but like it's going to be like an ode to black ops 2 in a way i think there's going to be some like okay. similar maps and like maybe some uh what's the word uh, remastered stuff um but yeah i mean they look great the one thing about call of duty is their graphics and like make it like the realism like they had like a snoop dog one they had a Nicki minaj one and they're very true to like how they look um all three of these people uh sorry, sorry i'm sorry no 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 sorry, i'm doing a lot here I was, trying, I was trying to do it discreetly <laughs> and then all of a sudden there you go uh, i saw it in like the corner of my eye i'm like what's going on it was just there's too much i liked it for the quiz it was just too much stuff in my yeah, no, way no. i got the laptop oh. oh just almost broke that sorry no, we're it's good. a lot going on there's there. a lot going we're Thumb. still getting used to the stands we're still getting yeah, used to the wicked. stands yeah for sure um, but no i think uh they look so they good. look great yeah. they look great i think it's cool to see like these kind of crossovers. I don't know if you've played uh, Fall Guys. You know what Fall Guys is? We played that on the channel. Oh, yeah, yeah. We yeah. did, we did the on, added, on Mustache Bros. Um, they just added a few new ones. They added, I believe it was... Because it was The Ray, Undertaker and John Cena were the original ones, right? they added Ray Mankind. Sick. Sick. And I think someone else, I believe. I forget who, but it was recent. And then, like, Fortnite has Cena, Bianca, right. Becky Lynch. That's why I wish they added, like, if they put, like, a Cody Rhodes and a Ray in Fortnite. Oh. <laughs> forget about it i saw um we can look at some of the pictures but i saw some of the pictures and the only one i saw with a gun which all right i'm kind of shocked which i know we're you know getting to the netflix and things are gonna change in the rating whatever i'm a little shocked that they're doing this collab because it's like do they really want cody rhodes and ray mysterio with an ak-47 i'm thinking like you know what i mean Cody's gonna get a headshot and his blonde hair is gonna have that's the crimson oh. red that we're looking for that's what that's, that's what gonna be I, there's no i there's, there's no way they, yeah, they should they should That'd be sick absolutely um yeah the I only mean, one i saw with a gun was ria was ria yeah. and she looks fucking i think she's wasn't there a video of her that came out yeah she was like sliding and yeah doing, i mean it look it really does but look here's what well, i don't all know the, why there's a ring I all the ray like pictures <laughs> all the ray pictures i've seen are just him doing wrestling you think moves. this is like wwe 2k or something right because like this one there's one where he's hitting a bulldog to cody and it's like where does that come yeah in? i don't know if they added like oh, oh my god, god there's a crossroads in it no yeah, fucking because you way have like <gasps> it's kind of like mortal so that must Com- be what it is they have like uh it's like a mortal Kombat thing where it's like you can have like a special move like you come up from behind someone like you kill them but it's like a special move kind of yeah the, you, can I you remember, do a six one nine in the game? I don't think so. That would holy shit. That's the re. Of, that's even. I didn't know like 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 adding the because like I know in some of the games again like, I haven't played a recent Call of Duty in a long time, but I know in some of the games you creep you creep up behind someone, you knife them, and they'll do an animation where, like they you know slip yes, the guy's exa- throat or something yes, like that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that's Cody you can do Rose a crossroads to kill that's someone. Actually, <laughs> that's so that must sick. be where the bulldog comes from. I guess there's probably a wrestling ring. I, maybe there's like a side a, a side game mode. Where like, do you know how they have mm. them? I don't know if you're familiar with playing like Warzone and stuff. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Gulag, yep, yep, where yep. it's like you die and you have to. Go oh, maybe the Gulag is you have to wrestle Rey Mysterio. That's a good you, point. One on one. I mean, here's that. fucking here's Cody and That's Rey like a backstage, backstage brawl or something. My guess. Ooh, I wonder if like maybe this is just a new arena in general, and like you go through like a WWE performance center or something maybe. like that. That could be it too. Maybe interesting. Yeah, it looks great, though. I wonder if you're going to be able to hit uh, Rhea's finisher, the I Riptide. Yeah, I don't think you can hit the 619. 619 seems complicated. That seems a little too complicated. 
Oh, there's Rhea hitting the crossroads. This is crazy. Maybe, yeah, I don't know. This shit's nuts, dude. Yeah, I like I love the crossover. I, I think it's it's cool to kind of get that expo that exposure to this other fan base. So is this a part of Warzone? No, I think it's multiplayer in general. Okay, I think it's anything, anything multiplayer. But so Warzone, it, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so like, because Warzone. Warzone's free. Is this like season I five? I think you shit have free? to like down. I think this is like a DLC that you have to. Oh, download, you're right. Probably right. But right, like, right. if you do, you can get it. You'll have it for any game mode. Interesting. I yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't played this Call of Duty. I don't. I, I think oh, okay. I didn't buy this one. Gotcha. They also don't have zombies in it, which is uh, Black Ops Six will have zombies. Because I know with Warzone, you can just update it and it's still free. Yeah, when you get big time. The, I used to play Warzone a shit ton. Yeah, like I the, added a little Warzone stand during like the pandemic and stuff like that. I played it a ton, but I haven't played wow. it in a while. That's wild. Okay, um, we'll dive into. Uh, I don't have much for SmackDown really. SmackDown, yeah, I just was got a, was an okay show. Nothing crazy. Um, I kind of just got the bloodline standing tall at the end of the show. Mm -hmm. Solo kind of drew more lines in the sand against Roman, which I thought he was really just like hammering home the like, I'm the tribal chief now. Really even just like, you you can't beat me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Do you see the uh, SummerSlam poster where they're in the car? Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Wait, where they're in the car? The what? Yeah. The what's like all the bloodline. His like, he's kind of looking over. Oh, maybe I didn't. Maybe. I didn't look closely. I don't. Yeah, I saw something else. I saw, I saw no, this. No, not that one. Oh, so, oh just look up SummerSlam, SummerSlam poster. poster. Yeah, it's like the. It's not the match poster. It's like no. The it's like the actual oh, poster. Oh, oh, I oh. I don't know how I feel about it. Let's see. Come on. Where would it? Where the fuck is it? Are you kidding? Probably oh, there. Oh, oh I, you, saw, I saw. I saw it. Oh, I've seen so many people doing memes of it. Like it was like a pink car is like going to see Barbie or something <laughs> like that. Like they were in pink suits. Uh, it's fine. It's here's what I'll say. It's creative. It's at least a theme. It's a theme. It's at least a theme. A and theme. like they're, it looks like they're going to do a heist or something. One comment I saw and I agree with, but like then there was someone else that kind of like disputed it and was like, if you look back at the history of SummerSlam, like not every poster has like a summer theme. I miss right. when like summer scene theme was like biggest party of the summer and it was like the ones we had with Sophie where John Cena's jumping into the mm-hmm. pool and they're doing like a cookout and stuff. Like I love those posters. This doesn't really scream I would, if summer. this was like fast lane. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean like look at even the SummerSlam well, logo looks for the like past a, I feel like for the past handful of years, for some reason the theme of SummerSlam have been like race cars. And like, you know, SummerSlam would be like an exhaust and like you not, know what I mean? Yeah, I'll tell you what, it's not summer themed. I'll tell you that much. I'm with you. I, I like the. Po- I'll say this. I like the poster, mm-hmm. but I'm with you that yeah, I, I would, don't dislike. I would it. rather them lean into like the the summer theme, but it is called SummerSlam. This is also a little bit of an intense feel. Because then right. imagine if like it's like Cody and Solskoa laying out <laughs> on a video, you know? getting a tan. So yeah, but that again, like some people were disputing and being like, "Here are some of the best SummerSlam posters ever," and they're not have has nothing to do with SummerSlam. Like the one, like Bret Hart and Undertaker. Twenty twenty three also kind of had just like a like see oh, like it's the, like the same yeah it's like the same style the car oh wow yeah see, this it's had like a car the same in it. thing. That's what I mean. They've been doing the car thing for a while. 2022. Okay, 2022 was like a... was a little different. Yeah, because I was in, was in New Orleans. New Orleans, yeah. yeah. New Orleans, New Orleans, whatever. Same 2021. Thing. Or the Star. star. They had the Star for a while. Star was running for a while. Star so again, yeah. So, so I guess I mean, over the past two years, they've been doing the car. But yeah, yeah, I would... I mean, when's the last time? Let's see. Let's see how we can how far we can go back when it's like a summer theme. I'm not counting the New Orleans theme. Well, I guess... Star again? Uh, the st- it's like summer That's more of a New Orleans theme though not mm-hmm. summer this damn yeah star, they're running man. the stars they really just in 17 star i'll do we'll do we'll do one more 16 star just, whatever yeah Weird. they've been doing it for a while yeah yeah i'm with you i'm not like i'm again i don't dislike it yeah. I, I agree like this is this is gonna be the biggest feud uh this is the biggest feud right now technically like roman reigns might return that's gonna be this is gonna be the main event of the show so like i get it mm-hmm. but yeah um so the bloodline beat down Cody Rhodes. Randy Orton comes out to help. Solskoa ties Cody in the ropes, kind of forces him to watch Bloodline destroy Randy. Destroyed him. Cody even cries out. I don't have the quote right, but it's he was yelling out like, "It should be me," <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. Like it should be, do it to me. Do how, it. To me. How can you not love Cody? I man? love. How can Cody, you not dude. love Cody? Uh, Randy and Cody. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, that was that. Boom. Beat down. Blah blah blah. But. Uh, Two things. One, kind of like a note that doesn't have anything to do with anything. 
I was watching it. I think I was watching this with my dad. I was yeah. at my parents' house. And uh, my dad even made the comment, because we used to watch like those mid-2000 Smackdown. And two of the biggest baby faces and most popular wrestlers are getting beaten down. When we were watching SmackDown in 2006, 2007, the whole locker room's coming out, right? Mm -hmm. Like, my dad was saying, he was joking, but he was like, where's Batista? Where's Rey Mysterio? Where's Undertaker? <laughs> Why are they normally, saving him? If that happens, like, the whole fucking cavalry. Randy's got to have you know a few I mean? friends back there that can He's help. been in the business for 20 to 30 years yeah, or whatever, yeah. you know what I mean? He's got to know a person back there. You're telling me help. Cody doesn't have any friends back yeah. there? That's my one kind of silly critique, but... um uh, kind of something we've been talking about for a while, and especially you, uh, Randy and Cody are becoming awfully buddy buddy here. I think there was even a segment backstage before this segment where Cody and Randy were next to each other, yeah. and Randy was like, "Hey, just so you know, he's getting. I got off, your back out there. Getting awfully close to that WWE yeah, championship. Yeah, he is. Too. Yeah, he is. Yeah, I think you know. We're listen. We I'd be damned if we didn't get uh, Randy Cody at some point. It's it's a money match. It's gonna happen whether it's at a WrestleMania or like anywhere else. Um, yeah. You gotta plant the seeds. I, I think the last few weeks, the last month or so, we've seen Orton kind of peaking at the championship and everything like that. Um, him kind of mentioning, you know, once the bloodline situation is dealt with and all that, like you're gonna have some people lining up, mm -hmm. and I'll be there. I'll have your back. So bullshit randy you're gonna have his back <laughs> fucking i we've we've seen randy for 20 plus years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're telling me we were talking about like if they have a feud if it'll be like if randy will turn heel for if he'd oh, be yeah. like a face face randy orton is a thousand percent gonna turn heel for that feud. this one thousand percent this heel turn is gonna be so fucking good and i think randy's gonna be i keep adjusting my mic i apologize no, but i want to make sure it's um like Randy Orton is so beloved, right? He's mm -hmm. the vet. Everyone loves Randy. And when he turns heel, it's going to be amazing. But I think he's going to be that heel where it's like, yeah, I think he's going to get booed for a majority of it. But he's still going to have people that cheer him, which is fine. It's kind of like an MJF thing. Mm -hmm. Even a Roman Reigns thing towards like the middle end of the bloodline story. Like he was getting cheered and stuff. So but I said, I think I said this one or two weeks ago where I was like, I think, I think it's going to be like if Randy Orton turns heel. And the crowd's so smart nowadays. I think they're gonna like, they're gonna boo him out of respect because they're like, oh, he's doing his best work as a heel. Like, our role is to boo him. Right. So I think the crowd's really gonna understand their role yeah. in, a, in a in a classic Randy heel move and boo the shit out of him. I think it's gonna be the the turn is gonna be great. And it's just it's gonna be a real. I hope it's just like a, you know, I don't know. They're standing together, Cody celebrating, and then just uh, one of those just like. He turns them RKO. And I don't think it's going to be one of those things where it's like... And he's going to stare at him. He's I, just going to be like... Oh. It's like, you should have... Like, you know oh. better. You should know better. You should know better. Um, like, I don't think it's going to be something that's going to, like, build up, 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 up. And it's going to be like, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? Oh, I think I, it's going to be sudden. I think they're going to do very subtle things like they did on Friday. Like, mm -hmm. he's looking at the belt. But it's nothing like... I don't think there'll be a point where, like, there's tension between the two. Mm -hmm. And Cody's mm -hmm. kind of like looking over his shoulder like i think it's genuinely just gonna be one random episode of smackdown randy's yeah. gonna do it and there you I mean, go that's randy's best heel turn so just like a switch flips instead of like a yeah. like, like a slow thing which i yeah big time classic big randy. time um yeah so I'm, I'm excited, excited for that. whenever that does happen if, unless solo beats cody at summer <laughs> which i pray to god doesn't happen that's my prediction <laughs> uh all right moving over to raw kind of throughout the whole night we got more Rhea live dom story which has been fantastic awesome. uh Rhea kind of kicks off the show uh uh runs down Liv doesn't embrace Dom Rhea issues a challenge to Liv Morgan at SummerSlam for a title she never lost that's true Liv actually accepts boom match is set SummerSlam Liv Morgan versus Rhea Ripley, Rhea Ripley for the Women's World Championship Dom on a pole man Dom on a pole man hanging above the ring yeah no I think that match is gonna kick ass it's uh, gonna be good it's I mean been, it's been months in the months in the making mm -hmm. Uh, it's cool to see this story like this is the uh, it's obviously you know the bloodline stories happen on smackdown where they're like this is the most prominent story on raw and it's cool that like it's featuring two of the top women you got you know you got some of the dudes involved to like help you know like, they're just part of the story yeah. not help this over they're part of the story and um i think Rhea and Liv have been killing it yeah 
Big I think time. this has been really, really entertaining. Yeah, it's been one of the best storylines uh, And they're going to kill each other. Yeah. No, it's going to be a fun match for sure. Liv said, mommy may be home, but I would say mommy may be home or maybe back, whatever. But Liv is finally on top. <laughs> Backstage uh, afterward, Rhea kind of slams the door in Dom's face to Damien's amusement. Good stuff. Dom is in the doghouse. <laughs> doghouse Dom, you can call him. So Seamus defeated Bronson Reed New afterward. Theme song. And so, but with the doghouse thing, Seamus said into the camera, he's like, you're in the doghouse, fella. Did he really? Oh, yeah. I thought that's what oh, you were making no, a joke. God, oh, no. oh, that's hilarious. I missed that. That's yeah, it's great. Like in the camera, like while his shit's playing, he just <laughs> he goes, welcome to the doghouse, fella. <laughs> you know what I'm actually, I've been loving recently is that when like Raw is on or even like NXT or something, uh-huh. uh, I put it on in the living room and sometimes Taylor sits there and she watches it with me. There you she's go. Been watching. Not like I can't say that she's like fully like yeah, yeah, yeah. watching it the whole time. But she's there. Keep she up like with the stories and yeah. stuff. We How'd want... you feel about the Rhea and Liv story? She uh she thinks it's I, when she saw it in person, she was like this oh, she right, right, couldn't right. and this is hilarious. It's like funny like like someone that doesn't like watch like the product every week. She was like so Rhea and Dom are married? And I'm like, no. Because oh, me and my cousin were like, oh, she's married to like Buddy Matthews in real life. She goes, oh, is that him? We're like, no, that's someone else. And she just kept saying like, so who's he married to? When's he coming? And we're oh, like, he's funny. not in this company. And then, and then Dom was like, she goes, wait, is that him? And we're like, no, it's not him. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I think she's just like, it's a lot going on and sure. stuff. And like all the sexual stuff. She goes, oh, that, this is kind of, <laughs> so we a lot going on. It gets, it's been getting horny. But it's funny. That. Like uh, when we went to the live show, like Jay Uso opened the show and like they did the Wyatt Six stuff, whatever. And she knows Jay because I talk about Roman Reigns a lot and Seth Rollins. So those are, it's like she knows mm-hmm. those two. Like mm-hmm. when she sees them, she'll know. Like Jay Uso's, that's Roman's cousin. So she'll be like, oh, oh that's Roman's cousin. And then when we watched a few weeks ago and Jay was out, she goes, oh, that's the Uso. That's Roman's oh, cousin. Funny. I'm like, yes, it is. Hell yeah. Yes, it is. That's the Yeet man. Yeah, it's the Yeet guy. Um, But yeah, like you said. That's funny. I didn't know he said the doghouse. Yeah. Hey, welcome to the doghouse, fella. <laughs> um, But yeah, new theme song. Yep. Uh, Whatever, written in something. What was the name of his theme song? Whatever written it's called. In the, written the in Lobster my face. The Lobsterhead song. Written well, in my face. Yeah, is that what it was? By Lobsterhead. Yes. I think it's by Lobsterhead. Um, oh, are you serious? That's what their band's called? Yeah. Lobster? Oh, wow. I think so. I'm I'm new. Oh, sure. yeah. I, I mean, I'm I'm not saying you're wrong. Was I, just, it written? I thought you were joking at first. No, 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 no. But now I just want to double check, make sure I'm right. Written, written in, in the face. Stars by Tiny Tempa. Written in the Stars. Great WrestleMania theme I thought it was song. By, it says Jim's Johnson. Where's, what's Lobsterhead from? Is a song called Lobsterhead? Misheard lyrics. Oh, wait a minute. His first theme song. The Lobsterhead's back, fella. What is Lobster? I don't... What am I missing? His theme song lyrics. Oh, I'm a fucking idiot. It's because... <laughs> It's because the lyrics are, it's a shameful thing. Lobster. Lost their head. Lobster people head. People say lobster head. I ah. thought, whenever people were saying lobster head, I thought that was the name of the fucking band. That's awesome. Oh, I'm an idiot. So a lot. Gotcha. God gotcha. damn it. I'm an idiot. Okay. Learn it's the Jim Johnson day. song. Anywho. The, uh, goat. the fucking goat. Yes. New theme song, though why i don't know i don't yeah. know why like i don't think the theme song's terrible i just don't think they had a change. no reason to replace everyone loved his and theme i'm pretty song. sure he, when he returned that was like him re-debuting that theme song as well because he changed it for a little bit too i think when maybe, he or maybe i'm getting it i think when up, he initially came back he had the old one and then all of a sudden he brought, out of nowhere yeah he had written it maybe that's face, what it yeah. was and then they gave and people love i love it people it's love it it's song. a good theme song it's a good theme song i don't know unless maybe some sort of licensing shit is up i don't know nah, i think they just love giving guys new th- songs <laughs> that aren't as good as their older ones um is it by deaf rebel probably yeah Fuck, probably it's ridiculous uh it goes it goes fella and then now that doesn't be funny classic uh, classic fella so this solid match you know it's cool to see it's always good to see these big beefy bronson big, reed Sheamus, you know yep. um bronson reed never seeming to win these maybe one day uh i don't know what they're doing bronson reed they got i don't know what they're doing with him yeah uh pete dunn and sheamus cross pass in the match before pete dunn takes out sheamus oh he took him out took him out toward the end I, of there i didn't catch i believe i believe he did the catch up i kind of i forget a lot of you know what happens in the mm-hmm. show so when i do a recap i like read something yeah that's what it said uh bronson reed is left there standing tall okay okay so uh uh brawn brutes-esque feud building sure. as well as me bronson reed finally getting 
He didn't get the win, but he at least stood tall to close the segment. I like Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate as a tag team, but man, when Pete Dunne was on his own yeah. as a solo wrestler, he was fucking goaded, dude. Mm-hmm. He's so good. And that's the thing, too. Like, you can say the same thing about T- uh, Tyler Bate. I love Tyler Bate. I think they can work. Like, they're both fine. They can be like a partnership, but they don't have to always yeah. be as a tag. They they're, can have in, uh, singles matches. They're a and fun stuff. tag team, but it's very also like Bianca and Jade, where those are just singles. They're friends, you and know? if they need to team up, they'll yeah. team up. But they don't always have to. Um, so interesting. It seems like maybe maybe next week, maybe in a couple weeks, we get Pete Dunn and Sheamus. Mm-hmm. See what kind of comes of that. Um, this is when I tuned into the show. This is when I okay. tuned it on. Sonya Deville basically squashes Lena Vega for some reason. Mm-hmm. The KCs come down to thwart uh, off Deville's, Deville's faction, thwart. who don't have a name yet. Shayna and Stark. Again, need a name. Give them a name. Um, my only, this is all fine. My criticism with this is it shouldn't have been Zelina. Yeah. She had a pretty high profile match like recently. She's another person, kind of how you said Bronson Reed, where it's like, she should, I feel like she should be in that. Like, I know she had a world championship match mm-hmm. recently and stuff, but like, she's kind of like one week she's in that match, the next week she's getting squashed. And it's like, what's going on? Like, you know, I feel like. I That's know. what I'm saying. She. Tough spot. I mean, like, I've always been the. Like, she needs a world title run. Yeah. Like, I think she's. She's due. She's so talented in the ring. She's so underrated. Um, the fans love her. And that's what I mean. I, I think it could have put anyone else in this match. They're going to squash her anyway. Right. Put it's like, why did it have to be Zelina? Zelina? Why did it have to be Zelina? That's my only thing. I and agree. I like the, you know, I love me a new faction. I like Sonya. They got to build momentum. Shayna Zoe. I think they need a name at this point. But, like, this is all fine. It, this, you know, we'll kind of come back to this later. But this is all cool. Yeah. Um, Damien and Gunther. Crazy. They're chatting. Yeah, they're talking. They're chatting. They're talking about a few um, things. Really cool video package for Gunther, kind of hyping up just him for SummerSlam. Uh, kind of played at first. They're kind of playing on the story of which I like that Damien's the undeserving champion. He won it on the Money in the Bank, and it's all a fluke and da da da. And Gunther's coming from the perspective of like, I deserve it. I'm gonna bring that title to new heights. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna take it off you because it's being. Thrown in the dirt with you. Just like it. the IC title. Right. Yeah. The only thing I didn't like about this was it started to get into like this uh this like almost like a class sort of thing where like yeah, where yeah, like yeah, Damien yeah. he was like talking he was about like being homeless or talking like, about Damien whatever. like fighting in the streets. Yeah. And then he was just like Gunther was putting him like and I'm like up I don't know. It felt unnecessary. No, I, I get what you're saying. Because they already had they already had like the 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 Gunther uh underestimating him and you're not worthy of it and da, da, da. i feel like it was just a classic just villain promo where he's just being an sure. absolute dickhead and um i mean like i get like uh, i saw like there are some criticisms like that it's like where it's kind of like i don't see like not like the point in it but like it's not necessary mm-hmm. but i watched that i'm like you can really tell that they're Damian Priest is converting to a baby face. That's the thing. That's the that's a right. hundred. He's the baby face in this feud. Absolutely, one thousand percent. So I think they're just kind of doing more. Where it's like, yeah, it's like so the criticism would be like, all right, like maybe they took it too far, but it's kind of a a thing for Gunther being like, all right, he's saying all these shitty things. Well, he's the heel, so right. it's like hate him for that, and it's like feel bad for Priest. There's sympathy and stuff like that, you know. So I think it accomplished what they were looking to do. I think they they it, like they did a good job with that. Um, yeah, and, yeah. It just makes I agree with they're that. an asshole. So I agree with that. Like I said, while I don't love it, at the end of the day, it does bump Damien into that baby face, whatever. So like at the end of the day, it accomplished what it needed to accomplish. Yeah, big time. He went on to defeat Braun Strowman in what I I. I all it need to be and all it is is just a good W for the champion. Big time. Proves he can beat a guy a big, that's bigger than mm-hmm. him, a monster, which is tough tough to find a guy bigger than Damien. Right. Um, and my only note here is hopefully this is the last of whatever the fuck this Braun Strowman Judgment Day yeah, it's just it's like a is. side story. Kind it's of. so weird. Yeah. He'll come out during the match and then do his run around the ring thing. I don't know. I don't know if people like it. I think bit. it's kind of stupid. I miss the days when Braun Strowman was like undefeated on the main roster. Yeah. An I absolute was, force to be reckoned with. I was never a big Braun Strowman guy. Like whenever Braun Strowman came out, I was never like, a, oh, here we go. Mm-hmm. But uh, looking back, I think I do prefer 
uh, when he was chasing the world title and he was a big undefeated guy, like you said, versus just like this. He's not silly. He's a just shell like, of himself. I feel like. a little bit. I just, a little bit. Yeah, I just feel like look how big the guy is. I feel like you can work with that and build right. him to be like the most dominant guy. And he's like athletic mm-hmm. for his size and stuff and the way you can run and everything. It is kind of funny they're ignoring him in terms of like this Wyatt Six stuff. Kind of just totally, totally yeah. ignore it, which I didn't even think hey, of maybe, till now. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll, maybe they'll add some him. sort of story at some point. Yeah, who knows? Um, going back to the uh, Sony Deville feud, uh, K- uh, blah, 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 Joey Stark and Shannon Baszler defeat the KCs. Um, again, my real highlight for this is, God damn it, the KCs are so yeah. good. They shouldn't be losing here. I, get, lost. I know. It's a credible team. The faction's building up, but they did like their what's it called a keg stand that's their move mm. they did the keg stand from the apron to the outside they're like how yeah, do you not no, push great. them to the moon yeah it's like the, I, again i've said that i think we said this before like they're one of the only like actual woman tag teams like right. solidified woman tag teams mm-hmm. so again i'm uh, i like this I, I don't want harp too much on this faction it's cool i'm glad that all these women have something it's great to see it's sonya different. back in the, yeah, the ring time. that's awesome um let's just kind of let's get it together a little bit let's get a name and let's get a direction and we're off the races yeah backstage dom is digging his hole deeper kind of bragging to ria i guess earlier night jay uso asked for ria's number um, that segment that's another thing where i was going to mention i don't know if we you had it written down uh-huh. or not um, or Damien being the baby face and stuff. Cause like it was, Do- it was Dom and priest that were talking. Mm-hmm. Jay comes in and he was like, so uh, is like mommy single or whatever. And he's like, <laughs> maybe. And he goes, and he is, and he said something, um, to Jay and Jay's like, ye? and he goes, yeah, ye. like he said it back. And I was like, that's a baby face. Thing Damien's to say. like, he's funny. funny. He's never like, really been able to show how he funny he was is. like a baby face years ago. When uh-huh. he had, like the U S belt and stuff I, like him being in judgment day was, I think, Maybe not the first, like, full heel turn on the main roster, but, like, that was when, like, he was like, okay, he's a bad guy now. But he was a good guy. Mm-hmm. He, I, I feel like, like, obviously, right now it's tough because he's in the Judgment Day, he's this and that. But, like, once, like, he separates himself from the Judgment Day, which I, which I think is going to happen eventually, they could really build him up as a great baby fan. Yeah. I think he's a very yeah. believable and likable guy. I mean you you know you've been you've been listening to this other half of the of the of this podcast for what what's what maybe a year and a half plus at this point. I was not a Damian Priest fan. I was actively kind of like this guy's boring. Mm-hmm. Da, da, da. I'm a Damian I love this Dude, guy now. You I let, love him. I think like what we're seeing now is like more of himself. Uh-huh. Like genuinely himself where it's like for everything that I hear about him is that he's a very likable person. He's backstage. People love him. I mean, oh, that's yeah. a big reason why. I mean, I never, him. I never thought uh, different about that, but, right, but right. for sure. But like trusted worker can like, you know, is he going to be, is he going to give you a five star match every single time? No, but you, you know, he's going to give you a solid mm-hmm. outing. Uh, he can, you know, you put him with guys like Seth, Drew, Gunther at SummerSlam, like you're going to get a great match out of him. Yeah. That, you know, I was going to I think back before, back before the drew match or back before the seth match whatever we were kind of looking to the gunther match right. and we were like is damien really the is guy to credible face him? to do that and credit to damien he's proved himself and to be the guy to face let gunther. me tell you we're not doing predictions right now <laughs> right we're not but there i mean i wouldn't hate a, a damien win doing a really good job at making it seem like he could be Gunther. G- i don't know I, I think it's also to be said like i think gunther is getting so so full of himself and yeah, so right. cocky of like i am so good at this right. i am the best and like maybe that gets the better of him right. maybe damien catches him and he upsets him i think they're doing a great job and that's a testament to one damien all mm-hmm. the work he's put in and like how much he's like he was given this opportunity and he's ran with it and he's done a great job and how wwe has booked him as a champion i, I think people looking at it like who's going to be a transitional champion. That word right. may have even come out of my mouth, my right. mouth at some point. But like, as every match goes on, he's proven that no, like he's earned this and he seems like he's being built up as a credible champion. And at this point, like I'm not like 99% sure that Gunther will win. I might even say it's like, maybe I'm 80, 20 right now. And that's a lot still, yeah. but like I'm closer to 70, 30. I, yeah. And as we get closer to SummerSlam, I think it's going to get closer and closer to being like, 
this could be a coin toss. Mm -hmm. It really could be. So I do like that. I love that. I'm very happy that they're building him up like this. To jump back to Gunther, I do also like where he's coming from. It's kind of like presenting the video package too. How he was even like, I didn't even want to be a wrestler. I'm just so fucking yeah. good at it that yeah. they came to me. That's he's what like, I'm saying. Like, it's so he's funny. so good. It's like, he's he's like, like, this is just my job. It's very like Jokic. Where it's like, yeah, this I is was just, just about this is just my like, job because I'm for fucking this. good at it. Yeah, I, get that. I just want to go home and ride horses. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, but yeah, so later on in the segment, uh, Dom's against Hole Deeper. He's like, he's like, oh, I got this match with Jay and da-da, aren't you proud of me? And Rhea's like, why would you do that? And then Dom's like, I can cancel it. And she's like, well, what are you, a pussy now? Can't do anything right. And he goes, I just want to prove that you're mine. She goes, Dom, what? Dom, you got to think before you say, brother. He's, she's like, talk. He's like, what the fuck? Da, da, da. She walks away. Classic Carlito. That's not cool. <laughs> That's Dude, not cool. He, like, his comedic presence, just like the one-liners and just those little things, bro, just rocks me. I think it's so funny. I think, I think, I, th- I think this is a fair take. I think he's the modern day Ron Simmons dam sure you know yeah, no i i, I like less that less coming out of nowhere yeah. but just like the quick one-liner to end a segment of just dang like the whole segment he's That's just cool. he's just in the background and like it like kind of rea walks where whatever and carlio just steps in and goes that's not cool <laughs> that's <man."> not cool <laughs> <laughs> um love it drew mcintyre and adam pierce segment not much to progress the story but it was fun uh, Adam Pierce says he and everyone else wants Punk versus Drew, and he'll he'll uh, reinstate Drew McIntyre if he apologizes to the referees. Obviously, Drew refused. Suspension stays intact. Drew ends up shoving the two refs. Seth comes in, and Drew exits. So, yeah, I don't know how I felt about this personally. Fine. It just I didn't mean it was a fine anything. segment. I don't think it. Yeah, I don't think it did much. It's like apologize to these refs, and you'll get your match. And Drew's like. No, right. I don't want to do that. I don't know. I just felt like that's kind of like if Drew really wanted a match with CM Punk that bad and like hated Punk as much as he does, he'd be like, I'll suck this up <laughs> to get my hands on him. But he's like, I want to face Punk, but I don't feel like saying sorry. Yeah. Which I don't I, know. I don't know. That I like makes... that part because I think he is a very prideful person. Sure. And he's a very stubborn person. I feel like they could have done that a little differently. Maybe maybe like in a different. Like, I mean, it's just kind of it just nothing happened because now we're just. Where like Adam Pierce even said I want the match, Adam. Uh, apparently the suspension's gonna mean fucking nothing because we've we keep he's seeing been suspended he's on, like three times. He's been on, on three times. He's on TV every week, yeah. and this at the this at match this segment ended with him just being suspended. But now we know that he, it can be lifted. They, it just kind of it just kind of did act. they announce CM Punk for next week? Is he gonna be, is he gonna be on the uh, show next? I don't week? know. I don't. I, I didn't see anything. Close. It's the first weekend of. Of August, so we're we're two Raws away. Okay, so I'm assuming Punk is gonna. I mean, I don't even know. No one even knows if this is gonna happen. Like, no, I don't think anyone knows if Punk's cleared. Like, that's the I thing. think it's the hope that he's gonna get cleared. Yeah, I think what I saw online, and again, I don't take it with a grain of salt, uh-huh. but like, I think his like clearance date is like within a week of SummerSlam. So mm-hmm. like, he if he gets cleared, like it's gonna be like a few days before, mm-hmm. you know. And you can't make a match with, you know, you can't. You got to be, make sure that he's right. cleared for that to happen. I mean, I think whether, whether they know he's going to be clear, like, hey, he could be cleared right now. Who knows? Um, I feel like they're going to save the announcement for like the last Raw mm-hmm. before SummerSlam, whether it's to really make sure or to just to kind of like go home show like, yeah, this match is going to fucking happen. Like we're anticipating it happening. I want to. Uh, we're getting kind of closer to the end of the show here, but I want to. I want to move on to the big beats of Raw here. We got the Wyatt Six video that Pat McAfee got on his show, brought to Raw, and he said, "From now on, Michael, this is your job. I don't, <laughs> want, I don't want this anymore." Um, I thought this was amazing. Bro. It was featuring Eric Rowan. He was kind of the focus of this mm-hmm. whole thing. It ran through. Um, uh, it was really an emotional. Just Eric Rowan talking about his past and what happened therapy session little therapy session little soul therapy session and he talks about uh how he lost two brothers doesn't mention anyone by name but he said i lost a brother that being luke harper and he's like i i pulled like picked myself back right found a purpose and i lost my other brother lost my other brother being bray wyatt and and what was so powerful is not not naming anyone but they know who he was Mm -hmm. seeing him get emotional on camera 
And again, this has kind of been like a lot of this where it's like, especially with Bo, is like the 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 injection of real life Realism. and real emotion uh -huh. that's used to kind of give a real purpose to this family and yeah. and i thought this was a plus and this what was great. people are i agree i think was mm -hmm. I, I think this could have been the best video package like i know the bow one was very the first one was very mm -hmm. deep him talking about him losing his brother i mean this is at almost the same level i think this is un, i think this is number two under the first yeah i agree sure. i think that's yeah. how i would do it too um um, 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 um now it's what's going to be interesting is because we got bow and rowan and right. they both have connections to Bray. Right. Bo being his brother, Rowan being in the Wyatt family for all those years. Where does Joe Gacy come in? Where does Dexter Loomis, Nikki Crot, what are their stories? Right. Uh, now, the whole theme of this is like they all came from families. Joe Gacy had his NXT family. Dexter Loomis was in, had like Johnny Gargano, Andy Hartwell, Candice LeRae, mm -hmm. Nikki Cross was insanity. So they all came from factions right. that didn't work out. So, like, that's their story. But, like, how does it connect? Are they going to connect it to Bray? Are they going to connect it to Uncle Howdy? Mm. I think how well, I guess they it's do like it. We were lost and Uncle Howdy found us. Exactly. my guess. So, I, I, think, and I think people are kind of not concerned but being like, okay, how is it going to tie in how, like, Ronan mm. voted? And I don't think it necessarily has to be about Bray. Like, yes, it's, like, why it's right. It's, like, the family name, all this stuff. And, like... The, the root of it is Bray because like Uncle Howdy, all that stuff. But they don't all have to have had like a relationship. Yeah, with I agree with that. Yeah, you know I what I mean? Um, and that's what makes it exciting. I think the, the foundation with, with Eric and Bo can be built on that. And like, but you know, that doesn't mean everyone you know, else has yeah. to have a part. And I think too, like it makes it interesting being like, oh, now I'm looking forward to how they're going to have what their story is going to be and stuff and how that presentation is going to be. I'm assuming this means, and I hope this also means, we're going to get like more one-on-one -on -one introductory and videos I think with everyone. It's perfect because I think everyone gets their backstory. Yeah. Everyone gets like why they're here, what drove them to being – to become like the character like whether it's the rabbit the the crow the uh -huh. the, as the wit whatever it may be um I, i'm listen man this storyline they're hitting yeah this they're is doing great. a great job so far so uh, kudos to them jay uso defeats dominic mysterio mm -hmm. uh and what was a solid match was more so just kind of you know a playground yeah. for the story here Liv morton comes in to save dom from an uso splash dom ends up on top of Liv again Liv grabs him now she's on top of him and she's on top of him for a while she kind of gets in gets in real close and then rhea ripley's music hits live head lives head shoots up <laughs> and you see her mouth oh shit she gets off Dom. She runs. Rhea comes storming to the ring, runs off Liv, Liv's outski. Um, this all kind of allowed Jay to get the win. Bada boom. Good job. Uh, and then later backstage, we see Rhea and Dom. Dom's all beat up. Rhea comes in, gives Dom a black rose and says, I'm not anyone's, but you're mine. Boom. We're back. Wow. We're back. The power couple's yeah, back. Love that huge this yeah. is yeah you know, and again this is the uh the culmination not the culmination culmination is gonna be at SummerSlam, but sounds gonna happen at summer this is the next angle and i think i think i think Rhea needs to press dom a little bit and on you know what were you I, right now he's getting off a little scot-free you know yeah. i think there needs to be a little bit of like of like I, i'm seeing man i ultimately i'm surprised they're back i ultimately think this is gonna i i think at SummerSlam, Dom's gonna help live, and they're gonna end up. Ooh. I like because now it's kind of like Dom's feeling like, oh, like maybe this is something that he feels like, oh, he could be happy that like she looks at him like that, but maybe he's like, you no, know, a little weary of like, oh, I'm yours, but you're not mine type of thing, mm -hmm. and that kind of plants. Live is li live treats me nice. Maybe maybe he likes a little bit different of a listen. He relationship. Has all the chicken nuggies, the, the <laughs> video games. I mean, that's the life, man. It's hard to pass that up. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah this this has been one of the best stories in, in WWE and wrestling right now. I'm very very interested to see how this plays out over the next few weeks and uh, culmination being at SummerSlam. But yeah, we're we're back, baby. We're back. We're so back. Power couple's back. Yep. We're gonna go back over to the white six. Chad Gable calls out Bo Dallas to come to the ring. Not Howdy. Bo. 
Yep, exactly. Bo, Chad. <laughs> uh, genius Chad figures out. He's like, I got it. Uncle Howdy's Bo Dallas. Adam Pierce is like, yeah. Yeah, we yeah, all know. Duh. There was even a backstage segment yeah. that I skipped over, but like, um, same, same. The Creed Brothers. Or sorry, Bo Dallas does come out. Creed Brothers mm. come out to assault Bo Dallas to help Chad. Boom, we got we got these three standing together finally in the ring. Uh, they put Bo through the ringer. They beat the shit out of him. He's beat selling him down, his ass down. off. He's too. really selling. Sold his ass yeah, off. Yeah, he was taking these bumps. Uh -huh. And then the more he was getting beat down, all of a sudden you kind of start to see him laughing. The more he's getting beat down, he he's laughing it. more and more. Eventually it's kind of hysterical laughter. Very, very Bray Wyatt-esque. Oh. And, and not only his look, his mannerisms, the laughing, and he's how saying, he's acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you are. You yeah. are. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. You are. All of a sudden, boom, lights go out. Wyatt six make their way to the ring. They're on the apron. You see the you see the four family members. Chad dips out. Creed brothers dip out. Family members come to the ring, and you see this shot of the family members all in the ring together with a beaten up, maniacally laughing Bo Dallas. Oh, this was the cool. The pictures this they got, was cool. Bro, the fucking pictures they took of that was so fucking sick. I love a little, like, tiny thing that they did that I honestly loved was that Bo came out to no theme song. Like, there's no mm. character there. It's mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. him. It's not like this isn't the Bo Dallas that we've seen over the years. Yes. Like, he literally just, like, walked out. He's a broken man. He's... I love the split personality thing that we're getting or we're going to get more of. And just the closing shot of him with the light laughing into the light and just like his arms out with his family. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, it's – I've said it. I said it a few minutes ago. They are killing the story. And I've I've said, I'm like, if you're going to do something like this in memoriam, in light of everything with Bray Wyatt, you have to do it right. Mm -hmm. And – so far, they are fucking killing it. Yeah. So I'm so happy that this it's going the direction that it is. And it's looking like maybe Wyatt Six versus Creed Brothers and Chad Gable, maybe at SummerSlam. Maybe. A you know, three on three. I was thinking about if they would have a match at SummerSlam. They gotta get in the but ring I'm, eventually. I'm also thinking like if they play out the video packages, like if they do like next week, let's say Joe, oh. Dexter, Nikki. You kind of post SummerSlam. Unless they try to fit it yeah. all before SummerSlam, which like I'm not going to be the guy to be like, oh, they shouldn't have a match because they didn't get to play a video package yeah, for everyone. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to sit here and say that. But like to me, it feels like SummerSlam is a packed card right now. They already have like mm -hmm. seven matches that or seven rumored matches, I guess. I think there's um, like four confirmed. But four yeah. confirmed. Then there's going to be like an IC title match. There's right. going to be, uh, you know, f the four world championship. Th there's going to be a few ones, right? Um, and I feel like this might get like kind of not lost in the shuffle, but like I feel like they could hold mm. off on this for a little bit, and like maybe the next event. Yeah, I don't think they should do it. I think this is something that is a pay per view worthy match, not like do it on like an episode of Raw. Like I know we talk about like having those big matches mm -hmm. on Raw and stuff, and I'm don't want to go against that, but like I feel like that is a pay per view match. But oh, I'm with you. I don't they know should if, debut on a big stage. Yeah, I don't know if SummerSlam is that stage though. I'd be cool. I'd be fine with it if they did. Um, but also, uh, the Creed brothers and Gable are finally together. Um, I mean, like there's finally. so much, so much. We're gonna see the debut finally. The Wyatt Six, yep. Creed brothers, and Chad Gable are kind of finally a faction. If they lose, it's fine because it's a super fucking natural force of nature. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, no, I'm excited. Whether it happens at SummerSlam or maybe SummerSlam, we just get a little more story told. Sure. Regardless, right? Um, yeah, they they're they're killing it. I'm excited. Each week, this is like. If you don't have any other reason to watch Raw, just to see what they're doing next with the Wyatt Six is like reason enough to tune and in. And when I was watching Raw, like at one point it like hit me, I was like, Oh, we're gonna get another Wyatt Six. I was, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. was like, fuck, I forgot. Like yeah. that we're gonna get something to that. I it love was it. like it was like seven thirty and I was like getting ready to watch Raw. I think I like finished dinner and I was kinda like getting I was like I was like, Oh yeah, uh, Raw's on tonight, da da, da. and you know, nothing really. I was like, okay, we'll see more re and live stuff. And I was, just, and then kind of that same moment with you that you had. And I was like, oh, we got a Y6. Oh, I wonder what's going to happen with Y6 tonight. And I kind of got like, yeah. you know, I'm already, I was already like, you know, uh, you know, I was obviously love watching Raw on a weekly basis, but having that extra like mystery or, oh, I can't wait to see what they come up with for this specifically is like really, really fun to go into. It's called cinema. It's called cinema. 
to end the end the night and the show, we got Braun Breaker causing a disqualification between Sami Zayn and Ilya Dragunov. These guys were beating the shit out of each other. Yep. Yes, this is were. my favorite match type to have Sami Zayn in. He just he fits so perfectly in just like the scrappy, hard hitting. It's very Kevin Owens esque too, which is like. This style of wrestling just fits Sami Zayn so perfect, and it is Ilya Dragunov. So yep. I think they they matched each other really well. Um, like I said, Braun Breyer came in disqualification, blah blah Spears, and you get it. Triple threat match incoming. I'm thinking Braun Breaker, Sami Zayn, Ilya, SummerSlam. Wouldn't be IC bad, title. Wouldn't be a terrible match that's to what have. I'm thinking. I mean, that's, that's a good way to protect Sami too. If he does lose, he doesn't have to get pinned. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen some people saying. This match could even be bigger. You could add Sheamus to the mix. Whoa. I know Sheamus has kind Whoa. of been floating around a little bit. He's never won the IC belt. Um, I know he's kind of stuck up with now Pete Dunn's in the mix, so maybe that kind of takes him out of the equation. But um, yeah, you know, they could have gone the just a simple rematch, Breaker sure. versus Zayn, but obviously Breaker and Ilya have some history. It they, makes they so have much a rivalry. sense. I think it makes a lot of sense how a triple threat match, and that makes an even more like, damn, like Sammy. Braun break, good chance Braun wins. Sammy could lose. And I- Ilya, I think, you know, he'll you know, he'll have a chance. And I wouldn't mind seeing him win the belt. But if they do a triple threat match, I'm gonna be in the camp of like they're doing this for Braun. They're I would I would Braun. think so. That's, honest, what I, honest. that's a that's what I would be leaning towards. I thought I thought he should have had it last pay per view. So at this right. point now it's like, oh, this it's SummerSlam. Now it's even more time that Sammy's had I, it. And, and I will know. admit, if if they do do this match and Braun does lose, then I'd be Ooh. like, mm. be weird. Yeah, I'd be like, all right, what are they doing now? Yeah. So, um, I mean, the only, but the only thing, it is a it is a triple threat, so that could be a reason. Pinned, yeah. It could be a reason for him not to lose. And you're very, uh, uh, you get another. Then like you, in the next paper, you get another rematch, one on one. Yeah, and you yeah. keep on. You know, he, Braun keeps getting frustrated. He keeps losing. Now Sammy he lost because of Ilya. Did you know I that this know. is Sammy's longest reigning, um, like as a singles champion, his longest reign in his WWE career? I heard that. Yeah. Because I mean, eh? what else is he? He oh. had the, he's had the IC title a few times, but I guess they were shorter reigns. And was he an NXT champion? He was, but that was only like maybe two months. Yeah. Maybe two months. He didn't really yeah. have a long reign with that. But yeah. It is surprising how he hasn't like... Yeah, it is. It's it's surprising. It's not. It's surprising, but it's not. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't got. I don't got much more to say about that. Yeah. Uh, I think that is the end of this episode. Uh, Good up. Good up. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Um, I do want to get a plug off. Yep. At the at at the beginning, I was gonna kind of. I waited to announce it. I do got a new show that I started. Yeah. I got a new, I, 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 I got a new little pod. I've kind of been seeing um, uh, some of your tweets and stuff about it. I wanted to get like I wanted to get a few episodes deep to see if it was a thing I wanted to keep to going. Make sure you're actually. Because I didn't want to do like it. one episode and then announce it and be like, just kidding. I don't want. Yeah. Do this. No, I get that. Um. So yeah, three episodes are out. Uh, I did make the last one all about Lumberland. That one did really well. Uh, <laughs> Shocker. So, yeah. Right. So if you want to, yeah. I oh believe me, I had that. I had that name and I was like, yep. Yeah. Yeah, no, you um, got to run with it. I, I knew what that thumbnail was going to yeah. look like yeah. months ago. Oh, yeah, big time, big time. <laughs> um, so if you want to listen to that and kind of kind of hear that, it's over on my YouTube channel. It's all linked in the description. Oh, the, yeah. the episode, the 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 show is called Kind of Stubborn. Um, if you look that up, it's on Spotify, it's on everything. Oh, yeah. It's all linked. It's a new a new little just side project um, independently Love that. working on. So. A little passion project. Yeah, it's a fun, it's fun time it. over there. Yeah. Um, as well as sitting courtside. Oh, yeah. Plug, plug that. Plug in, my, <laughs> plug in my own stuff. Yeah, <laughs> speaking, <you're> of, <laughs> speaking of plugging your own stuff. Yeah, if you're a basketball fan, love if you're or if you just love love me, you love us. Support sitting courtside basketball podcast to do with my good friend Jerry, who also works at Clutch Points, uh, weekly podcast, uh, long form episodes, all that good stuff, shorts, gamified content. Sitting courtside, link in the bio, link in the description. There's going to be a preview of the Patreon show at the tail end of this, but mm. as a reminder, patreon.com slash dash club wrestling, five nine nine a month to support the channel. We got a lot of questions a lot this of week. Questions Tons this week. of questions Let's this go. week. Again, it'll be previewed in about, I don't know, five seconds when we get out of here, but head over there if you want this episode ad free as well as a weekly bonus episode with enough shilling, enough shilling. We'll get, <laughs> we'll get out of here. We're going to go over to the bonus, over to the after party. Yep. And thank you for watching. Thank we'll you see you all so week. We got stuff coming out all week. We appreciate you as always. And thank you. Thank general, you, thank general, you, thank, thank you. you. And we'll see you. Until the next one. Peace. Because I saw Inside Out 2 the other night. What if they got rid of the Money in the Bank PLE and move it back to WrestleMania? Great question. What if? Passion. Is this a monumental thing? Because this is the first college football game in 
a long time. Monumental is an understatement. Okay. This okay, is the that's first one since NCAA 14 